good morning as Chris says I am director of doctoral programs in the School of Management um, and as part of my responsibilities I look after the DBA program um, and so today's webinar is about giving you a flavour um, for that program that we offer here at Cranfield. So let me share my screen so you can see my slides. And as Chris said, um, I, as Chris said, we are more than happy to take your questions, but please can we leave those to the end? If you've got a burn, if you've got something burning, please put it in the chat and we'll make sure that we come to that first at the end. So the Cranfield Executive DBA. The first thing and, and the thing that we are asked probably more than anything else is what is the difference between a DBA and a PhD? Um, both are doctoral level degrees and certainly at Cranfield we consider them to be of exactly the same standard. Um, so the standard is the same, the level of rigour, um, the level of, uh, uh, the level of um, intellectual contribution required is the same, they are both doctoral degrees. However, the intent of, the, uh, of participants is usually different. So for the DBA, uh, it's very practice focused. Most of our most DBA candidates will come to us with a problem um, that they want to address, something that they've seen uh, in practice, something that's maybe niggled at them, um, something that they've seen in their in it might be in their organisations or more broadly or more broadly in the in the sector. But it's usually rooted within a practical problem, people who want to make change in practice and don't and want to apply the rigour of academic research to that problem, but they don't necessarily want to become research professional researchers. Um, we tend to we have we, we they've they've been coined rather nicely, I think, as prof as researching professionals, which I think is quite a nice way of putting it. And so this practical impact, hence the slide, is really important because it's an important part of um, making that change. So if you want to make a change, what you're doing is, is making an impact. And that impact will be on maybe on your organisation and preferably more broadly within the sector. And it might be business, it, it, might, be, it might be policy, uh, but it's, making, it's taking a, a practical problem and applying the academic rigour, academic processes, academic thinking to that problem um, in order to make an, to make an impact. So we are, you're applying, uh, you're looking at how it's been solved previously in the literature, you're looking at how academic theory addresses it, you're applying the methods um, that, acad that in academia talks about to solve that problem, um, but the key contribution at the end is to practice. You also need to make an academic contribution to thought. So management thought and theory needs to be moved forward with your work. But where a PhD is a training in, in training to become a researcher um, and, and that contribution is directly to management theory and papers and literature, in, uh, in, in a DBA we have a slightly different focus, that contribution being first um, to practice and how using your research you can make an impact with more broadly within the sector wherever 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 you sit. So that's the first piece. The second is to think about the journey and you as an in so this is thinking about you as an individual and why why you might come to a to a uh, to, to a DBA uh, course. And many, many, many people come because they want to make a change in their career. It might be they want to make a step up um, within the organisation they work at. So Andy Wood at Adnams um, had a, was a, a lower board member when he came to us he'd, and he used his DBA. Part of using his DBA was to step up um, to become, a, a, become CEO of the organisation. And he's gone on to do great things in, in that role. Um, particularly taking the sustainability part of his DBA work. 
and that's uh, and was awarded um, an OBE a few years ago now. So it might be about making a step, that career change for you might be a step up in your organisation. It might be about taking a step out. So many of our DBA race researchers um, come to us in corporate roles, but actually use that their DBA to step out into more portfolio careers. Um, it might be um, it, it might be to go and set up a consulting business. Um, it might be to go into politics, as several of our DBAs have done. It may be to do a bit of academic work and a bit of consultancy, and maybe still a bit of work within the corporate sphere. So it so some some of our our DBA researchers then go on to move move on to to more portfolio. Um, careers or a complete check in some in some it is the it is the impetus to do something to do something completely different so that's the career piece but what we found and is le probably less obvious at the outset but for many um, when we when we talk to researchers who are coming to the end of their journeys the personal transition is also a really 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 important part um, of the DBA journey. And what we find from talking to DBA researchers and also the people that they work for is that their decision making gets better. Rather than working on, extinct, on instinct and experience, DBA researchers, researching professionals are able to, to deal with complexity much better um, by looking at, evidence, at the evidence more clearly and um, using that to make more rigorous often faster uh, decisions, they're able to deal with complexity better than they were before. And we get that from, we, we get evidence of that from talking to DBA researchers and also the people they work with. Uh, somebody who's recently submitted their thesis um, made, made, that made exactly this comment that their boss had said, you're making better decisions, you're looking at the evidence more broadly, um, which, which, which is, uh, a, ch a personal change, uh, which makes a big difference to many of our many of our researchers. So that journey, that transformation from the business professional to the researching professional, can be a profound one, um, and can be quite drastic in some in some cases. So there's the journey. So how do we take you on that journey? How do we support you through that journey? So structure and support are really important to us. Um, and our part are built in mindfully, actively, in, and explicitly into the programme at Crownfield. Um, we've broken down, the programme's been broken down um, into seven deliverables, which you complete over the, which our DBA researchers complete over the course of their studies. Um, and these break a doctoral level thesis down into seven chunks. Um, some of them are bigger than others. The first one is very small. Um, others are more significant, but all of them are much less than a 40 to 60,000 word thesis. Um, so it's about breaking down that very large piece of work uh, into something that is more man into more manageable elements. And also each of those elements has a time scale. So rather than saying, right, OK, here you are. Welcome. Welcome to Cranfield. We'll see you in four years with your thesis. We say, actually, no, we'll see you in a couple of months for the first bit and then six and then three months later for the next bit and then six months later for the next bit um, in order to assess the work that you're doing. We also start, you start on your research from day one. We assign supervisors as part of the application process um, and you start, you don't spend, we don't, different to some other programmes you might have looked at, we don't spend a year or two doing um, research methods training and then start on your research. We do the research methods training alongside the research. So you get the skills that you need as you need them um, to, develop, to, to develop your research. So we have these, these clear mind, milestones. These are supported by a number of cohort weeks which take place at Cranfield and give you the tools and the techniques that you need um, to uh, to carry out doctoral level research. We don't generally teach subject matter. Um, so we won't you won't see courses on marketing or HR or logistics and supply chain management within this. You'll see courses on 
writing skills and qualitative and quantitative research methods and critical thinking and working with literature and those kinds of things. The school, the, the things that the tools that you need to carry out effective social science um, research in the social in the social science sphere. So we have this structure. We've got clear milestones, and then the third thing that we think is really important is these high levels of support. So everybody is everybody is supported through this process. Um, you have two supervisors. One, uh, your first supervisor, you can expect to be a true expert in your field. Um, your second supervisor may also be an expert in your field, or they may bring something else. You may be doing cross-disciplinary research, so two two supervisors make sense. Um, you may be doing a, you may be planning to use a methodology which is different to the specialism of your primary supervisor, or they may bring some other some other aspect which is which is important. So everyone has these two supervisors. Everybody joins cohort, um, so uh, a group of like-minded a, a group of like-minded people um, who are who are going through the journey with with you. Most of you start together and hopefully finish together, um, and that that group of people we find is almost the most important support network um, for for DBA researchers. That ability to share the pain and the achievements with people who are walking who are walking the journey together is really powerful. And each cohort at Cranfield we have is assigned a cohort leader. So they are a member of our faculty who will be involved both in the recruitment process and then they will walk that, that, walk that path with you. Um, so you'll see them when you come regularly, when you come to Cranfield. Um, and you, so you'll see them regularly when you come to Cranfield and they will work with you, particularly earlier um, in the programme, and they'll be your first point of contact. Later in the, pro uh, later in the structured methods programme, we add space to, to um, make sure that we are fulfilling the needs of individual researchers and the cohort. And it's your cohort leader who will help you work out, work out what those extra, what those additional things might be. We then have me as the programme director. We have a, a student uh, administration and support lead who looks after the DBA. So uh, uh, on a day on a day to day basis. Um, and then we have, and then you, then you'll all be within a research group at centre, a TLG, which is a thought leadership group, as we talk to them, and then the broader faculty at Cranfield. As a relatively small management school, um, we are, I think, one of our, one of our, as well as being close to practice within our DNA, is also collegiality. Um, and I don't think there is a member of faculty who wouldn't be happy to to talk to you and support you. Within, within, your DNA, within your DBA study. So these level, different levels of support are very important to us. And one of the key, the, one of the key pieces, as, I said, as I've already said, um, is this peer support, the cohort, the, co the, co the walking through, the walking with the cohort, um, that peer support. A di a, any doctorate is hard. And the reason that we put all this support and structure in place is because it's hard for a 23 year old uh, with no responsibilities who's studying full time. It's even harder for a senior, for a senior executive with a family and other commitments um, to fit that into their lives. So this, this support, um, both from the structure of the thesis, but also from these, these different people and the cohort being one of the most important of those, um, we find is really, important and helps with um, keeping people going, keeping people on track um, and, uh, and, and helping them make it, make it through that process that they start out on. So cohort, we're, we're very cohort based, structure and support are very important to us. So I've talked a bit about this structure and, these, and this programme and this, so this is our, this is our process here. And so these the verticals here are our cohort weeks. So these take place at Cranfield. Um, over the over the pandemic, we have been we have been online, but we are now moving back to Cranfield, and, and our hope is that the uh, that that the, that that going forward we will be we will be face to face 
at Cranfield for our cohort weeks. Um, and during these weeks, you are delivered that we deliver um, those that research methods training that I was talking about. And you'll start off with things like writing skills and research philosophy, and later on you'll move on to to methodologies. We don't teach modules. Uh, well, we do teach modules, but we don't teach block modules. So you'll have you'll do you'll do some of me, you may do some of many things over the course of the week. But we do try to structure what you need so you get what you need for that bit of your research. So when you're doing your literature review, we're focusing on literature skills. When you're designing your research, we're looking at design um, and methodologies. And something that runs across all of it is writing. Academic writing is different to business writing. You're expected to do more of it and, you, and you're expected um, and, and there's a depth to it which is different um, to uh, in, in most cases to what you might be used to writing uh, previously and it is a skill I often liken it to, to playing a musical instrument we start off as beginners but even the highest um, concert pianist will practice every day will feel they can get better and that's the same with writing um, many doctoral students might be starting off as beginners but their supervisors and the top professors will still in, in their field will still think that they can get better. So writing is something that we focus on um, and, and we give you support with and something that we will we hope will improve um, over the course of, uh, of your studies. If English isn't your first language, it's a particular it's a particular focus. But I'm supervising um, a, a DBA student at the moment who is uh, who, it, who English is definitely their first language. Um, and one of the biggest tr struggles that they're having is actually is, is actually the physical writing, the writing it on the page. So we have these cohort weeks, four in year one, three in year two, and then one each in years three and four. And then along with those, we have our deliverables. So we start with the problem formulation, which you present in week two. It's very short. You then move from that into positioning your research. So thinking broadly and widely about, about how your study will fit into the the extant literature before you move into a much more detailed literature based project so it's a deep dive um, then towards the end of year two you design your research and also your impact so I said at the beginning um, that impact was uh, the key difference and the key differentiator of a, of a DBA degree and for that reason we explicitly design it into the program to make you think about that make make our researchers think about that impact and how they might how they might generate it so you make a plan at the beginning and then you look at how you've done here so we've got research design so that's actually what you're going to do well are you going to go into, are you talking to people um, are you collecting numbers are you what what is it what is it you're going to do and why and then this impact plan you then go away and do do your empirical project so this is by far our longest deliverable um, typically taking a ta taking a year to, to 18 months and so this is the, the the empirical heart of your DBA the collection of data the analysis of the data and the writing up um, so that's deliverable six towards towards um, the beginning of, of year four and then the final impact deliverable seven is the impact assessment so what impact have you made to date and what impact are you going to make going forward? What conferences do you want to go to? What papers do you want to write? What policy groups are you going to get, in, uh, are you going to get involved with? How are you going to patent your, uh, have you got something you can patent? Those kinds of things might come in, might come in here. And so all the time we are engaging with practice, we are developing your research capability and also an important part is the research of the personal and, and career develop, so th development, thinking about are you, are you going to achieve those career goals? How, how, are, are we supporting you? Can we support you in, in doing that? And then what you have at the end here um, is the bones of a thesis. So your seven deliverables um, are the bones of your thesis that you then write, um, that, that you then write up into a thesis. You can't just say, right, put them all together and say this is a thesis. There is a process to go through, but it's a much easier process than starting from no words, than starting from no words. The only, each of these deliverables is assessed as you go along. Um, in addition to your supervisors, you have a progress review panel um, who 
who assess your work as you go along. But the only summative, the only true assessment is the, on the thesis and on the visor at the end of the process. So that's the process. We are AMPA accredited, so one of only 10 um, DBAs worldwide um, who, are, <coughs> who are accredited um, for, for five years. And actually, we were visited by the AMBA accreditation team last week. Um, that we were uh, accredited by the uh, AMBA accreditation team last week who have accredited us for another five years. So we're extremely proud of that. And a few highlights. I, I mentioned Andy earlier, now, now CEO of, uh, 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 of Adnams um, and also does a huge amount of work in the east of England um, in, in sustainability. So yeah, hugely, hugely successful, hugely proud of Andy. Um, Amabola Johnson, Nigerian. She's, um, she, she, has worked, she, she left um, her DBA and went to be a minister um, in the government in Nigeria and now is uh, doing work um, to, with, with, uh, for affordable internet um, and doing, doing great work in, in Nigeria. And as a, as a different um, example, Mark Baker came to us in a corporate role and is now running a very successful um, consultancy, Brad, Bradbury Consulting. So he used his DBA to, to move out of the corporate world into something, into something different. Okay, I think that's everything that I wanted to say. I will just, um, no, we'll come back to that later, um, but I will stop sharing. And I'm very happy to take any questions.